And welcome to the Bench Monster TV show. I'm Ashley Lynn Condre. And I am the Bench Monster. How's everybody doing this evening? Thank you for joining us. As usual, we appreciate it very much. Hope, Hope everybody you guys had a good week. Had a good week. And everybody's, is everybody training at a gym yet? Depending on where you are, I'm not sure. Mm, not very many not places. Not in Washington, necessarily. But, right. But more, I mean, I places are starting to I want to start off by saying that if you're viewing in tonight to uh, this channel, that if I ask you to please stay to the end, the end will be the most important part of this broadcast. I have something special for a good friend of mine, and I appreciate it if everybody would stay to the end. It's a one-minute slideshow, and you'll you'll see it towards the end. And I just want everybody to know that um, it's uh, what's most important tonight. Mm -hmm. So That's kind we're going to keep this focus. show kind of kind of light tonight. So, yeah. but uh, this week's training for me, I'm just going to be honest with my fans out there i uh, went to the gym on tuesday night um i had a new kruger shirt um it worked very awesome but i was more anxious to get into the bench daddy shirt and i got into the bench daddy shirt and it is really tight it's really aggressive and um slight intimidation factor of this thing um when i first put it on it um it uh, i started with 800 and it I guess the uh, chest panel had folded over on itself while I was coming down, and my handoff partner said that it was a uh, six-ply now, and it locked up really bad. And so I was kind of defeated, and I waited my next round, and I put the 800 on the bar again, and I put that Bench Daddy shirt on, and I got it up as high as I could on the sleeves, I believe, and uh, couldn't get my arms out all the way. I got ring finger on the, uh, the ring. I'm usually pointer finger outside the ring. And 800 pounds came down about two inches, so... Um, I passed it around to my other training partner and let him hopefully break it in, stretch it out a little bit. Um, it's a real aggressive shirt. It's exciting, but I think it's going to take a little bit of work. I'm not going to say it's too small, but I am going to contact Mike, Mike Womack and ask him because he makes the shirts and he would understand. And I'm going to send him the video. I was going to post it tonight, but it's nothing exciting to see 800 pounds come down two inches and then I push it back up. So it, uh, it froze up on me, and I don't know um, if I – had this I, the, I watched the video more and more tonight I just think that I may not have had the sleeves up all the way they might have been might they, they might have been locked down on my arm I don't know but I'm gonna pick it apart and I'm gonna find out what's wrong and and uh, better myself next time out so how was your training this week it was okay it was a pretty good week uh, my body was feeling a lot better than last week last week I was pretty beat up uh, but this week felt better and training went pretty good yeah okay I'm gonna deload next week but uh, this week I have not much to show. I, I, I picked some of Ashley's greatest lifts, gym lifts, gym lifts yeah. but I wanted to showcase those, and um, we'll go over those real quick. But uh, I was thumbing through, start off with something. This is not even like silly. lifting. It's silly, but it caught my eye because, you know, I scroll through Facebook looking for stuff, and I ran across the video, and uh, I saw a gigantic bag of Cheetos cheese puffs. Ooh, you know, cheesy good. fingers, you know, all that good stuff. Oh, totally, Love them. Yeah. So right. I'm, yeah. I stopped, and I'm like, well, you know, maybe I'm going to learn something here. How to fold I them. haven't seen this. I don't know yeah. where you're going. I, well, you know, I'm this sitting is down. This a surprise I'm like, to me as well okay. as our viewers. Well, I'm like, I'm going to learn something here because <laughs> I love those chips. Now, halfway through here, I'm losing interest because that's a lot of time what to wrap a bag doing? up like that when it's just going to be opened in 20 minutes again, and my gigantic <laughs> monster fingers are going to go in there. I mean... I see what she's doing, and I get it, but I hate to break your ego, Chief. I mean, I don't know if you're aware, but there is a thing called a chip clip. <laughs> Saves a lot of time, and you can get right back in there quick. And <laughs> while we're on the topic of Cheetos, everybody's eaten them before, I'm assuming. They're not on my diet, but when they are, um, there's no one bowl, put it away for the night. <laughs> it's uh, get the bag out. Yeah. And we all get the Cheetos. Fingers. Yeah, cheesy fingers. Now... Yes. There's two ways to clean those off, and I thought about this. Are you a sucker or a scraper? That's the question. Scraper, like with your teeth? Uh, yeah. Well, but, but you, sometimes you have to. I scrape. I mean, so, yeah, I, I, I lick, but sometimes if you've really been digging in over and over again, that's pretty deep, and you're going to have to scrape, scrape a little bit. I like to scrape, because usually it's pretty embedded pretty thick into my fingers the that's way I grab a, those yeah, things. So, yeah, yes. so I, I, I guess I'm both. I scrape. And I scrape enjoy. when necessary. Yeah, sucking too, too long, too much work, and... Uh, too much anticipation there. So. But, uh, Anywho. Yeah, so I thought that was cute. You know, I watched, I watched her fold that bag of Cheetos, and five minutes into watching her, I'm like, there's got to be a better way. I mean, because 
I'm not going to do all that work and just reopen them. So yeah, I thought I'd, I understand. it was just a, one of those things I saw. Maybe, you know, I saw Cheetos and I got excited. I know, right? It's fat boy food. I mean, <laughs> I've eaten a lot of Cheetos. Cheetos. Cool Ranch. I can go on and on. Chili cheese Fritos. I mean, Ooh, yeah. oh, I'm getting yeah. hungry. All the Dorito, all Doritos. I don't know if I like Cool Ranch or Nacho Cheese better, but I love both. Sour cream and cheddar ruffles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, those are good. Yeah, and, oh. You're making me hungry. We haven't had dinner yet. Yeah. Well, let's move into your videos. These are videos that I stole off your phone. <laughs> I, when you were out uh, doing what you do in life, um, I was rummaging through your phone, like I always do. And I found some videos. Wink, wink. No. So basically, it looks like we got a squat, a deadlift, and one squat video that I found has some interesting meaning behind it. And when we get to it, the third one. I feel like this mystery is an episode to me as much as anybody else. Well, I don't have any lifts to, sh to show this week. You okay. know, I, there's, you know, what, what I, what. We're going to get yours next week. Yeah. You're gonna I, something. my focus, as you guys will find out at the end of this video, was on one thing this week and putting, putting this um, little right. slideshow together. You yeah. know, took up my time. I the end is the most the, important. The part end is what I worked sure. on, and it was lifting. Really, wasn't in my in, in my mind, and um, my mind was on that. And you'll see why towards the end of this uh, this series. Um, so let's start with one of your. What we got a squat. So okay. I'm gonna push play. I just want to ask me, what am I seeing here? Okay. Okay. What are we doing? I'm spotting. I know okay, that. Okay. So this is five pounds more than what I ended up with at the Arnold. Okay. Um, I see but it. like at a much less spot for whatever reason, I've like lost weight and I'm like the lowest I've been in a long time. Okay. Um, like, so I was like 120, yeah, 125, 126, seven. Right. How much weight is this? It's like 350? Uh, 345. 345. To be exact. Okay. Knee wraps with those APTs I gave you. Yeah. Yeah. More yeah. than I can do. I mean, I'd like more. I'd like to be able to. I'd like 350. So, I'd like 375. I'd really like 400. Well, but, you're gonna get it. Yeah. And you keep working harder, and and it'll come. So I gotta ask the question. That a 340 squat for 127. That means I gotta do 900. 345. So that means I gotta Give do me nine, the five pounds. I gotta yeah. do 900. Uh, Something like that. I always do that because I just want to know what what on her back what has to be on my back. I'm 299 today. So you figure that out. But I want to move into the next one. Okay. My favorite, deadlift. I, I, Deadlift. You I always mess up the ma my math. Here, yeah, well, so, don't worry yeah. about it. I know it's, it's disregard. I, I know it's three times. I'll it's, figure it out and let you it's know. It's way later, more than sure. it would crush me in, in a wheelchair, um, unless I had a canvas suit on. Don't Hold on, I got it here. And you're how much? Two ninety. Two ninety nine. Eight twenty five. Oh, I can do that. That's no problem. Raw. And you can use well, raw, but you can yeah. use wraps. Well, but yeah, no, you don't get wrap? you don't get your you don't get your uh, power pants? your little power pants you've been wearing. Oh, well, I guess I lose. I have no business talking anymore. Because <laughs> I didn't have those. I want a pair of those. You'll get them you need to, when you go geared. Now, this deadlift here. Talk about this deadlift. What are we doing here? This. We got some cool music older, playing. This is from before, like right before the Arnold. Like, this was like, I'm not sure which week, okay. but it was a couple but weeks before the Arnold. But you got some chains Arnold, on there. And it's, yes. Well, what's it's the like weight? Four, uh, 400 and, chain, and one 400 chain? and a chain. So my, using my chain, 20 pounds? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's 20 pounds of chain and 400. So 410 at the bottom, 420 at the top. It looks pretty easy. You're not going to get that in the USPALW, whatever the hell that What? Is. Why? Yeah, you because know, anytime you struggle yeah. at the top, they, they give you a red light. So yeah, does that look good to me? Yeah. Thumbs up. No, but it didn't, it didn't really. I don't know. Okay. I'm sure we're going to get a whole bunch of comments. That was hitching. That well, was horrible. I don't know. <laughs> look good to me. I mean, people struggle at the top. As long as you're not resting I, it on your hips. Me, and I can't figure out. Shimmy, shimmy well, I know it if up. I can keep my back flatter at the bottom, I can lock it out better, and I think that's a lot. Of I don't know much about deadlifting, but I know I, what a hitch is, and I don't think that was a hitch. But who knows? I, I didn't think that one was a hitch. I, I am like queen of the hitching. Yeah. But I didn't really think that. Well, a lot of your deadlifts, you stick. But right I do at the have top. to struggle at the yeah. top, and sometimes you know, Louie would say, you need to get in the rack and do some pulls uh, below the knee. Oh, I do block pulls all the time. Yeah, but with like 200 pounds band tension and things of that nature, crazy stuff. I have chains. Well, it's, no, that helps. Yeah. But um, no, here, um, this, 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 I picked this squat video. I don't even know what the weight was, but it made me think of something. I saw a picture on the internet. I was going to post it. It was on Facebook. It showed 1975 lifting, and it was Arnold Schwarzenegger in a gym. Everybody's lifting. They're there to lift. Right below it's 1999 or 2000, and there's a gym with a lot of equipment, and guys are sitting and playing on their phones. No, I went to them in 2000. Well, I, I had the picture. 
it it just, it's like later. That's, 75 that's a, or 2020 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. it would have been like okay, 2015, sorry. 2020. Well, because 1999 I, and 2000, yeah, no. cell phones weren't that popular well, yet. They were all, starting to hey, grow, but they, it wasn't like now where I everybody had has if, one. If you had money, you had, you, had the, you had the brick. Yeah, but you didn't have a smartphone that you were constantly no. on doing anything and no, everything. You, it was true. really more of you were either texting well, or calling. Well, the point is this. Anyways. This, I, when I played I this, a lot. When I played this video, I for the first 10 seconds, I'm. I know there's nobody in the gym. I know that. But the look on my face okay. is a look of some bozo no. Gold's Gym member on a machine playing on his frickin' cell phone. So that's why you chose this? Was <laughs> well, okay, yeah, because I looked at it. What, I go, because I got the Because of the, the way that you look the, at it? Okay. The thousand-yard stare. I don't, like, whether I'm going to go over there, I'm going to play it, All right. and rip the phone out of his hand or rip him up by the scruff of his neck and take the machine. So that's what I came away with here. After, of course, your squat's awesome. Oh, nice butt shot. I yeah. I, I try, I nice try. short shorts. But see, I'm pissed. <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking that. at, but no, oh, don't ask. That's a thousand yard stare. That means you're in trouble. Yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, but now I got to focus because yeah. I'm here to spot. And if I knew I was gonna post this, I would have sucked in the boiler. <laughs> I think it was a post carb night. That's pizza in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say because it's not usually don't stick out like that. Thank God that shirt is kind of belled. <laughs> if it was tight, I wouldn't be in this video. So I don't know how much weight this is, but. Seem to handle I'm it. I'm not sure either. Three hundred and. Let's replace and then three. Are those five or ten? <laughs> yeah, it was impressive lift. Oops, yeah, two more left. Two thirty. And um, you do that constantly in the gym, and it it really chaps my hide that <laughs> I can't squat that much, and <laughs> I do my best, and my best is just didn't not good. Didn't you once squat like close to that? Like, didn't you uh, used to like? Seven twenty-five in knee wraps, and then I I was good in the. Uh, Power pants, you know. I could so do eight, didn't you hit, seven didn't you seventy. Try a once? I feel like I've heard that. I put I put on yeah. a canvas and I I put it on my back and uh, it was a quarter squat. I'm not gonna say it was depth, but I went down to just to feel the strain and that yeah, canvas suit pressure. My God, you guys, who wear that stuff? When I I see, I want to I do I, I want to wear a suit because I think that's the only way I'm gonna hit over four hundred. And I can't imagine, you know. When I asked Dave Hoff when we were hanging out with him at that uh, little lounge area there, mm -hmm. cracking some Crown Royal and IPAs. You know, because he goes down on the hole with, you know, 1,270, right. 1,300 freaking so pounds. Crazy. I know. And how do you maintain focus? You got, you got, it's got, he's got a blur. I mean, yeah. I, I just don't see how you maintain proper 2020 20 vision with that much pressure. So, yeah, but, uh, crazy. yeah, other than that, it's, it's a pretty short, short week. And, um, some John oh, Smith's like hopping on here like comments. five minutes before we started. Yeah, and I, he had a question. Yep, yeah, he, he had a question. Well, read it to me. Um, tell the story one. behind the handler, Paul Roch. How was his role in making and training the Bench Monster? Hmm. When I first ran into Paul Roch, he was in a real Gold's Gym. Not like these ones around here that went bankrupt and aren't opening anymore. Um, and he was going to do a meet. And I, only reason I knew who he was is because he would get in the Smith machine with five plates and scream and, and, and you know, scream the whole gym with hearing. <coughs> and I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, this guy's going to a meet, and I hope he doesn't think he can bench press 500 pounds. Well, he went to the meet and bombed with 315. So uh, after that, we met up and we said, man, we got to put our <coughs> heads together and start training. And uh, he just became the handler, you know, and over time, uh, thank God he was a great squatter and deadlifter. I mean, he pulled seven, seven, close to eight squatted eight i mean so he had he had the ability to hand off and uh he handed me a thousand like one of the scariest lifters i've ever well, seen well that's a that's the flip side of the coin <laughs> but how i'm gonna open with 315 he, he just, and then on my second attempt i'm gonna go 815 well that's how he would train he, he would walk into the gym with his uh squat briefs on yeah, and i start, never saw him do more than three rocks. start with 600 but i'd see him go up to eight not even warm up a grand yeah i think he put a grand in his hand several times oh yeah well, he, he was crazy. I mean, yeah. you have to have a screw loose to do the, some of this stuff sometime. Which was part of what made him but so cool, too. He, I always respected that. He, was he just kinda... basically just took on the role. I mean, when I laid on the bench, he was the guy there. And he found my line, and he knew where to hand it. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we had a rhythm. And, you know, at the time, we were doing seven meets a year. We were following the Wabdell circuit around here, you know, from uh, – uh, Post Falls, Idaho, to, to Kennewick, Washington, to Springfield, Oregon, Salem, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, and uh, sometimes all the way down to further down in, in Oregon. So um, he just uh, fell on the loop and and just enjoyed the ride. You know, where I went, he went, and uh, we, we were just like a dynamic duo. And um, I handed it off for him, he handed it off for me, and if 
I tell you one thing, if he wasn't around, I don't know where I'd be today either because, I mean, to have somebody, you know, to know where to set that bar each and every time and to put your shirt on and to know when you're doing things wrong or if I'm if I'm off just a little bit, he can see it. And then, so it was a team effort, man. And he was a big, uh, big inspirational part of me becoming who I am. You know, there were a lot of key players, you know, Louis Simmons. I mean, it was an interesting road. And when I write the tell-all book, you know, that'll all be in there. And it... And I ain't going to edit it down. I'm just going to go, it might be three inches thick. Wasn't Stephen King's uh, It book about that thick? Huge. Yeah, really something like that. So that's kind of that's kind of how Paul Roch, uh, and word on the street, I just heard the other day that when he retires, he's going to come back to powerlifting. I don't know what that means, but he's been away for so long. And I would hate for him to come in the gym and put on his briefs and go under the bar with weight he's never done. And he will get injured. Yeah. I don't know if he's wise in his old age and will come in and lift Hopefully. smart, or he'll come in and like he hasn't missed a beat. So right. it'd be interesting to see. I don't know, think it will happen, but somebody ran into him last week, and that's what they told. That's what he told them. So I'm just repeating what I heard. Hmm. That would be cool. Our liberal ass governor won't open up gyms yet. Complete bullshit. Hmm. I don't know where you live, John. Uh, same here. I'm assuming he's Washington. Yeah, like our, our doom and gloom guy out in Seattle. Uh, Some people are just kind of Inslee. deciding that they're done listening to it. Though. Yeah, yeah, I'm sick of it. Um, it this, this is a nightmare. It, it doesn't seem to be getting better. I know it is getting better in certain ways, but every time I turn on the, the Facebook, I mean, there's. I was gonna, I was going to speak on that New Jersey gym. That interests me, and I, I'm not going to touch on it, but I was really excited to see the cops go to that gym. That was Monday or Tuesday, and... Um, uh, you know, walk up to those people and say you're in violation of executive order. Have a nice day. Well, everybody got all excited. I got excited a little bit too, but I got a, bu- a good bullshit detector. And as soon as that was done posting, the um, they came back and wrote the gym owners tickets. And people were quick to call these cops patriots. And I was like, I was like, yeah, this stinks. And then the ne- now they're arresting people for working out and leaving the gym and they're and giving them violation. Executive order violation tickets or something. So this is a real interesting time to be alive, to see the, the destruction of civil liberties and uh, it just go on and on. And we could, I don't want to argue about it, but that, that that was interesting stuff that happened this week. So, but same here. Our gyms are slowly opening up um, next month in two I weeks think, or something. Well, yeah. whatever. The fa- I don't know how the phases work. I don't either. Every time there's a phase, he comes out and extends three? it. He yeah, says phase June first, then he comes out and oh, that's gonna be June fifteenth. Yeah. Well, I, I just I just wake up every well, gymnastics day. Gymnastics gyms are supposed like the owners around the country have been um, working really hard to get gymnastics gyms moved from phase three to phase two because first of all, little little gymnastics gyms cannot handle this kind of shutdown. Right. And the the gymnasts that we work with can't handle it. Gymnastics is a sport you got to train every single day, otherwise. You, lo- you get out of shape and you I don't lose it really it. quick. Right. It's very rhythm-based and flex. I mean, there's just, there's a lot to it. And to be, I mean, these kids, I guarantee you, have never in their lives went this long without doing gymnastics. I would venture to say most of them have so, not went longer than a week or two. So they'll have to be so retrained. Is, they're going to have to, we're going to have to start back real gently and yeah. But uh, anyways, that's just beside the point that they just, we found out this week. Um, they have been moved moved to phase two, so they'll s- supposedly, unless something changes, right. they'll be able to open June first. So I don't know about regular. Like I lo- other I'm lost gyms. on dates. All I know is I can go fishing right now. So we can I'm fish. Thinking, and well, I'm gonna go out and catch me some fish. Soon, hey, so. Cody Plum says, "Hey, what's up, Cody? Hey, Gormas, Cody. Robert Gormas, Gormas, my current handoff Hello, guy. Robert. Yes, it wasn't interesting in that shirt. LOL. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it, it didn't." Um, I was kind of, it, it wore me out, too, because I had high hopes. I wanted to get into it and move some weight, and it really locked me up. And I, I know there's a reasoning behind it. I'm not saying it's too small, or maybe I was wearing it wrong, or maybe I wasn't lifting in it right, but I don't know. I did something wrong, because I should be able to move 800 a little further down than that. I, like I said, I watched the video multiple times. It just seems like the shirt is so, I don't know, it's it's a beast, man. It, it's exciting, too. So, what's Mr hope you're both well how was training like in prison heard there's a few 500 robins in there is this true never went to prison I, I i laid in county jail here because i wouldn't lay down and take it up the ass and admit to being something i wasn't and by doing so they forced the uh, people to take me to a civil trial which i was found not guilty of in all shapes and matters and so at the end of the day ryan Canelli's just holding some testosterone and then uh, they said well you're gonna have to go to a halfway house and then you're gonna go home 
so I fought it for as long as I could, and that's why I have all my property, and because it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a ploy to seize all my assets and declare it, you know, blah blah blah. But I beat them and got some of their uh, illegal tactics that they used on me, like GPS trackers, which I have on my mantle here. It's a nice momentum, and they want it back, and they're not going to get it. Just so you know, yeah, you're not getting it back. You can't put a price on the Constitution, boys. You are freaking tyrants. Garrett, okay, Gary Jerry Swart. Swart. Hey guys. Says, Hi guys. Hi to Jerry. Justin Bonilia. Can you tell us about the reps method in detail? Reps method. Well, um, the reps method, uh, like I say on speed bench, you know, if it's uh, six sets of six for two weeks, eight sets of eight, ten sets of ten, that's a reps method. Uh, when we do tricep exercises, I the reps method I use is uh, one week. You know, it's, if it's speed bench, it's anywhere between 60 and 100 reps per exercise. And on max effort day, the reps method for me is uh, uh, six sets of six, eight sets of eight, and they're heavy. And sometimes we'll do them for time, which is like taking 30-pound dumbbells and doing rolling dumbbells for five minutes. It's kind of a good release of uh, the damage and tear, wear and tear we put on the elbows and um, it's, it's kind of a, eh, it, call it a deload, but it's also a uh, feeder workout. So it's, uh, it's going to recall, it's going to recuperate and build somewhat muscle too with that type of, uh, if you can do them at a slow pace. It's not like you do them like this because it's 30 pounds. You know, move them at a slow pace and just get comfortable. And you want to talk about burn? Burn on fire. Like, yeah, you won't believe. So uh, and if, if, maybe I'm not mentioning the reps method correctly. Maybe Westside um, has a different version of the reps method. Um, Feel free to chime in on that one. Navy P, amazing yep. deadlift. Well done. Thank you very what much. What about Cody Plum here? Todd, did I see? Oh, my gosh. Did yeah, I skip somebody? Skipping people. Sorry. I saw the compliment, and I was like, whoa. Okay. Um, I heard people are using chip, ki chip clips for subcutaneous injections. Chip clips. Um, possible. You're talking what? about the potato chip I have no clip? I idea. I don't know. Yeah, where it pinches your skin. Oh, and is that what you mean? That, no, I'm not saying it wouldn't work. That's very innovative, sir. <laughs> I like to see it. Might try it later. <laughs> um, you mentioned APT and recently wore an APT t-shirt. APT isn't back in business, are they? No, a APT, so. um, man, the owner. Unfortunately. Yeah, he was in, um, last I heard, he was divorced and he was into drinking and racing cars. And that was his priority. And that was the last I heard. Um, it wasn't too long ago. I mean, he, I thought he was in business four or five years ago, but he made some good raps. Those convicts, man, those bl uh, black and white ones, loved them. Actually changed the color of them so somebody wouldn't get mad. Made them red and black. Oh, best raps. Just found uh, those APT uh, knee wraps I gave you in that squat mm -hmm. video. Yep. I don't think I'll be needing them. <laughs> I've taken them over. I've inherited them. Um... Let's see, where were we at? Johnson Are up. those shirts made by the same guy who made the Iron Asylum shirts years ago? Um, Which shirts? I assume that you're talking about the ones that we're wearing. Um, these these right are here? actually from Tiny Meeker. He gave them to us when we met him at the Arnold. Um, they're of his gym, Monster yeah. Gym. You turn around and show you what it says on the back. Hmm. There's, there's a reason why we're wearing these, and we'll explain later. Um, stronger than your effing bleeped out jim hey stronger than your effing jim <laughs> is it mother effing or mother eff uh, i don't know what does mine say damn it effing i wish it was mother effing that's what mark henry likes to say <laughs> damn it well no. that's still an awesome shirt though that's why i yes, wear them yes i know these are really cool shirts and they're yeah. really i like the, I like the they're kind of like lycra yeah. yeah muscle shirts not just t-shirt yeah like 90s club <laughs> muscle shirt that i would wear black white pecs you know and crown royal Old days, back in the day. Mm -mm. Not no more. I don't belong at a bar drinking Crown Royal with a thousand pound bench and being 300 pounds because not many people are going to like me. So I don't go out. I avoid it at all costs. <laughs> don't yawn. Sorry. Do I do, I'll, <laughs> like, you, I'll back. my mouth. I'm going to slap you if you oh, need to wake I, up. I'm ready. No, if you're going to sleep. I will, I'll punch you back and I'll twist your nipple. Okay. I'll get you. Um, uh, uh, did you try the bench daddy? Yes, I did. Tried it on Tuesday. Um, it started with 800 pounds and I, um, um, wore it incorrectly. If you can believe that. And I'm a shirt guy. 
but I didn't realize that it was uh, what happened here was this material turned over on itself when I brought the bar out. So it's three layers thick here. So three turned into six and it went uh, and it stopped. And I really lost hope. And I was like, let's try it again. So we do, in the video that I have, we put the shirt on again. They pull it down. They hit my belt. I thought it was laying pretty flat. It still looks like it's bowed here. Like it's, there's a lot of, like it's not f fully against my chest. And that's going to be my argument. Um, and that being said, it, uh, it came out and it went down about two or three inches. Um, I'm not giving up on it. I'm going to uh, talk to Womack about it and maybe get one bigger a little bit. And because... You know, if it if I if it takes two thousand pounds a touch, then it'll probably be a board shirt at this point. Um, I don't really want to do a two thousand pound bench yet. Just um, take eleven hundred or eleven twenty and eleven forty or something would be cool. But yeah, so yeah, I definitely wore it. Love it. It's aggressive, and I see big things. It's just going to take some tweaking, and you know, there's only so many. There's only four heavy bench sessions in a month. You know, four Tuesdays. That's when we train heavy. Until the new gym opens, and then we go to Saturdays, heavy bench. So either on the on ship or uh, on the shore. So, the, the yeah, we're taking over Saturdays at the new gym. So I'm excited about that. Um, have you ever met Anthony Clark? Met Anthony Clark in Post Falls, Idaho, September 1997. God, the way you are with dates. <laughs> yeah, this brain is still it's working. It, it, it's it's pinpoint accurate. I'll give you that on that on that test and, uh, subject definitely. I remember when I drove up and saw him from far away. I, he was a huge man, 380, 5'9", five, 5'8", five, real short. Yeah. Walked up, shook my hand, the nicest man in the world. And uh, like I told the story recently, you know, we were, I was benching that day, and I benched a 468, um, and I was in Anthony Clark's flight. And, um, and there's a picture, and I think Paul Roch has it. Somebody has it. But it has me in my polyester Inzer shirt, and, he, and Anthony Clark is sitting on front chair backers with his hands up and I asked him if it was okay if I put my arms on his shoulders behind him and he said yeah, absolutely no problem and I have my arms on my shoulders and I'm looking over and there's a picture and that you can put a price on that picture I mean I, I've seen it and I don't know where it's at in this earth and I hope it's still out there but definitely um yeah it was a, a really cool meet in fact you know after it was over he was signing autographs I remember walking up to him and putting my hands like this and I went right beside him he was sitting sideways in his left arm I went like this and that, uh, that's how, that was half of his arm. So, big man and uh, strong. I think he's 7, 740 that day, reverse grip, like a toy. And uh, that, was an, that was an inspiration. And, you know, I got other Anthony Clark stories too, and I've told them on here before, but we won't, won't keep you guys too long. Have, yeah, sorry. Jason Jackson and Carpenter, bad blood there, I heard. Um, Jason Jackson and Carpenter. I'm not sure if that's now or was that back in the day. I don't know. They might have com had competitive classes. I don't know. That, uh, you have to get. Tell me if that was like back in the 2000s or where we were with that. I, I'm not sure. But um, I I'm not aware of that one. Um, remember, I uh, I never played on the internet too much. I never went. I never came home. And went to powerlifting forums and watched people post under fake names, try to figure out who's who. I was too busy trying to figure out how to be number one in the world and take it further and further. So the only time I really sat down to go read something is when somebody called me up and says, hey, so-and-so is saying this about you on this forum. Then I would go over there and look at it. But I never got caught up in that. Yeah, I did have the Bench Monster forum one time, and I did some crazy stuff on there, but it was fun. Um, it had its time and place, but uh, playing on the computer and that stuff is... You know, it, it takes time, and at that time, it was, you know, I was bloodthirsty and hungry to be, I don't even know what era that was, I just, maybe the 800, and it wasn't enough, you know, 800, I had, had to get to 840, had to get to 870, and then pretty soon people are doing 900 and 1,000, and I'm rowing a boat with one oar at 840 all the time, so <laughs> I, I had to get, out, get off my ass and figure out, what am I doing wrong, so. I like the high frequency programs like squat every day. You think that would work with the bench? Well, when I first started benching, when I was a younger man, um, 1992, out of high school, uh, I went to the family fitness center. And like I said, I benched every day, all upper body, never trained legs, six, seven days a week, walk in and bench. Uh, did it work? Yeah. Um, but at the time, I had a buddy who worked at GNC. 
and I had the whole store at my house. And you know who he is, yeah. my buddy Troy. And he would come over, and I, I had a literally, uh, I had a, co- um, a dresser, three feet wide, six feet long, uh, wood top, and you couldn't see wood. It was bottles of uh, Mega Mass 4000, Cybergenics, Ultimate Orange, Thermogenics, Yohimbi, the list goes on and on. And we, uh, amino acid pills. I mean, we take pills like this and chug them down and drink that dirt water Mega Mass 4000, which was like dirt, grainy dirt and water. Horrible. But hey, we want to be big. And, you know, we got, we're out of high school running around at 181. How do you get big? You got to, you got to have all these supplements and you got to eat all this protein. And we didn't know how to eat food. Thank God Big Macs were two for two bucks then. I'll tell you an interesting story about supplements real quick. And I hate to get off point. Uh, Phil Hernan came and did an exhibition thing at the Gold's Gym in uh, 96. And he's a big man. And I talked to him on Facebook. He recommended a product that they had in Hood River, Oregon. And in, in the Muscle Fitness magazines, if you open it up, it was called Testotropinol and uh, HGF-1. Testotropinol was a pill. But the HGF-1 was a liquid. It came in, a, in a, with a dropper. So I, one day... And it's, Screw this uh, this uh, GNC shit. I'm going to drive down to Hood River, Oregon. It's about two hours away. So I go down to Hood River, Oregon, and I pull into this gym. And it looks like a Gold's Gym, but there's no sign. I walk in. There's gym equipment. And over to the left, there's supplements locked up in the cabinets. And I walk over, and I see the supplement that he recommended, the HGF-1 and Testotropanol. And I bought that set. And it was 78 bucks. And I thought he was going to open the glass thing with the key and hand it to me. He told me to wait by the desk. And I looked in the back and there was two double wide doors with um, glass on them. And there was guys back there in lab coats. And I was like, this is, this is weird. Hmm. And uh, next thing you know, they're coming out with models of what I want. And I never forget it. So I took it home. Long story short, the testotropinol pills, I, they were supposed to be taken in conjunction, the pills every day and the HGH, the liquid stuff, HGF-1. Was supposed to be taken. I, th- I think it was only taken on heavy, your heavy lifting days. And heavy bench day for us was Friday. So Friday we would take a huge dropper of this stuff, put it under our tongue. And I don't know if it had deer antler uh, fur on, wh- wh- whatever. I, who knows? But all I can tell you is this: what I accomplished at 198 because Big Macs were two for two bucks. We went to make, and he 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 took the same stuff. And we're 198 pounds. We go to McDonald's. I sat down and put seven Big Macs away. Without without even pain, I don't know where they went. I can't do that at 350. So, and I was like, this is a fluke. So the next week on Friday we heavy bench, take a full dose of this stuff, go to McDonald's and McChickens are two for two bucks, seven McChickens, just mowing them. In fact, I ate seven and he was done with uh, six and a half and I ate his other half. Um, I don't know what that stuff is and I've emailed Mr. Phil Hernan about that and he has said it's not in production anymore. But I have no idea what I ate, to, uh, what supplement I took, but. The ability to put food away, because at that time, you know, my waist was probably 30 inches. I mean, what type of stomach did I have? Where did I mean, where did else? I just kept putting it down. It was awesome. That was a that was a supplement I would recommend to, to get if it was still out there, because it it, it took me to new levels. So, where where'd, where'd you end Let up at? Find, uh, let me find it. <sighs> Ryan, oh, how often do you OHP? Uh, usually on, I don't know how we're doing it now. So, uh, speed bench days, we usually do it light. No, speed bench days, we do it heavy. And, and, and max effort bench days, we do it for, for reps. It's kind of like the, the way that the guys I train with call it. So, and we uh, rotate, we throw them in um, tw- once once a month. We do a lot of dumbbells, seated dumbbells, Arnold presses. Um, it's just, uh, it just depends on the mood. You know, we make, a, we, right now where we're, where we're training at, we have to make up stuff on the fly. And so it's just, uh, what do you want to do next? Boom, we'll do that. Sometimes we'll do them with uh, Chris Stuffin's uh, that curved bar he's got. It's like a football bar. I forget the name of it. But we use that, too. We, we do overhead presses with that lately. So that's been fun. So I finally found my groove in my metal shirt thanks to my handler, Mike Sport. Mike Sport. Mike Sport Burns. Burns. Our crew is ready to compete ASAP. Team Barbender. Oh, awesome, dude. Yeah, we look forward to uh, putting on a meet at the new gym. Um, and not a U.S. – don't come down and do a USPA. We're going to do – my understanding, we're going to do a uh, APA meet. And we're going to have fun doing that. So that's the plan. But you can do what you want to do. I'm not telling you what to do, where to go. But, yeah. 
I'd like to see you do some big numbers. So come out anyway. So this is also from Cody. From yeah. When I tore my tricep, I was in a sling trying to take BPC-157, mm -hmm. so I used a chip clip since I only had one arm. Hey, that's innovative, sir. Yeah, BP-157 is a great healing uh, peptide. I mean, it literally, uh, it's surgery in a bottle, is what I've labeled it, like many other things that I label, and uh, that's what I call it, surgery. But if you get the real stuff, you can get bunk stuff and it don't work, or you can get the stuff that works, and in, in two weeks, I mean, I, I tore my uh, tricep tendon from rolling up a... Uh, de uh, not a denim, a uh, phenom shirt. Rolled it up, and it was so tight around the tricep tendons here. That's why this arm is somewhat smaller, because the tricep tore here. And I remember when it happened, I was, it was with 989, and I came back to the gym, and the meet was on a Sunday, came back Monday, and I tried to bring down 135, and it felt like somebody had a Michael Myers knife in my elbow. So I took some of that, and long story short, uh, the next Monday, I was doing two plates, with no pain, and the Monday after that, I was doing four plates and three chain full range back in action. So, I believe it works, and that's why I recommend it. Opinion on Scott Mendelson's bench press technique? Well, he has his own style, you know, and we all do. And um, he puts his feet behind him, and he's a big believer in that. And he's done a lot of great lifts that way. Um, it's not how I would bench. But um, it works for him. Um, it gets good arch. Um, he claims he gets good leg drive. I don't know how you do that on the tips of your toes. But I think there's a, there's a technique where you're his, and I don't know if he does this, but you're, when your legs are so close to the bench, you can actually squeeze the bench with your quads and flex up, and, you're, and you actually your butt won't come up. So there might be some, some other techniques he's doing when he benches. Um, stability is a concern. With that style because you know when you're on your tippy toes and, and back like that you know you, the bar can kind of do this on you that's why i base my feet out so i have a, a base but no it works for him and he's going to go 1100 pounds i know he's competing in september um in new york i believe and uh, he told me in, in a text that uh he's he's got the overkill shirt and he's going to go 1100 and you know what he's crazy enough and he'll do it he'll get it he's not afraid to get under that bar that the guy hey you know he, he's not concerned about uh, uh like a, like a win-loss record he's concerned about getting the most effing weight in his hands and, and trying to get it down and trying to press it. And he may have missed a lot of lifts, but that guy, I mean, he's uh, he's got a screw loose like me, and that's why we're so made for each other. So we should be married something. <laughs> I don't know how we live together. I, yeah. What, you'd, make There'd a be a fight. you'd make a cute couple. There would be a fight at the refrigerator in the middle of the night for uh, maple bars, whole milk, and – and we'd both be in our tidy whities but I'd be, in, I'd be in my Calvin, image. I'd be in my Calvin Kleins, and we'd be, I'd have sleep, sleepies in my eye, and we got to make, on. we got, we got to make a reality show, egg. yeah, just like the Ultimate Fighter, get all of us together in a house. I think it would be the funniest <laughs> be shit you've ever seen in your life. The shenanigans that we do and try to train together and live together in one house. Oh my God, I don't think it would be made for TV. I think it have to be on whatever that sense. Uh, was it Spice Channel? I don't know. <laughs> so. Uh, um, let's see. Back in the thousands over records? I hope so. Um, that's the game plan. I mean, I, I don't put on a shirt to go out and bench 900 in a meet. I won't even go out. I won't step on the platform unless I'm 1,000 and up. So if that's what you mean. Um. Awesome. Love Anthony Clark. He was my inspiration when I picked up my first Power Same with USA me. magazine. 1993 when I picked it up. Him and Ken Lane. Who was the guy when you did the 800 bench that jumped, that you jumped on off of the bench onto it about collapsed him? Troy? God, who I was? I think it was Troy. Um, no, it might have been Jamie Balliette. I think the only reason I, I did that, because that guy, I, don't would, watch it. I, I think it was Jamie Balliette. Silent player here. He uh, worked the gym that I trained at, and he would work there from 8 till 3 and wait till I came in at 3 to hand off for me. He helped me bench 800. It was his handoffs, floor press, all the things we did. He was a strong kid, and I give him credit. I'm pretty sure – or it, I don't, it might be Troy, but I want to give Jamie Balliette credit because when I came yeah, for that 800, he out. would lock the gym, and um, he would help me, and he was the only guy that helped me. And uh, – and uh, I never spoke much about him, but he's in that 
in that video. And I, now you're going to make me want to go watch it. We got to go watch it. I do I'm jump in curious. somebody's hands. I thought it was Troy. I don't know why I would jump in Troy's hands. At least hands. I just assumed. Because he's your best was, friend. He was watching. It's and great so that he's he, there. the first person you saw that you knew that. I mean, I told yeah. I, that's who I. In I the heat of the it. moment, it's a blur. And I'm to watch embarrassed it, to say. I think I'm right, but yeah. I, I'm not. You might be. I'm not sure. I don't think I'd put money on it, but that's what I always thought was that it was Troy. Um, let's see here. I got my B piece. C7 from Phil. Right on. Ultimate Orange. Yes. LOL. Yeah, Ultimate Orange. Bang energy drinks. I don't know. You know what it reminds me of? Here. When you were a kid, there were those little cups, and they had a little wooden spoon. The Dixie cups with the orange and the and the orange vanilla. and the white, and mm-hmm. you licked them, and you licked the spoon. God, it's like it's like reliving sixth grade and fourth grade. I mean, you know how important those were in the summertime. <laughs> wow, you just couldn't eat one, and you hope your mom and dad bought them. And if you ate them all, you were grounded at my house. <laughs> That's no joke. Oh, I know. No, uh, Mindy's technique requires heel drive, and you want to be on the balls instead of. Well, that reminds me. On balls well, that, instead of toes. Yeah, balls instead of toes, I understand. So I'm assuming his heels are up. And now that, that begs me to ask the question, is it like a meta militia? Because, you know, Bill, Bill Crawford taught me that. Come back on my toes, and then when you come down to bench, you push your heels down. It brings your stomach up. So I don't know if Mendelssohn's doing that. I have to watch his videos. I never – God, you know, I haven't talked to him about lifting for so long. Like I said, when this COVID <laughs> stuff is over and we're not wearing masks and gloves and people are freaking out, you know, I'm going to board a plane and go visit the man if he invites me down and uh, go to his gym and we'll bench and we'll we'll, have, we'll do some shenanigans. I want to see if he wants still. I asked him in 2005 to go to the comp and swap meet and he looked at me like I was crazy. I, I think we would do well. I don't think we would get in too much trouble. We're two big people. We're kind of bulletproof. And I just want to go down there and get a hat. I want to go down and get a Compton hat and, cut and say I was there in a 40 of St. Ives. But nobody will go. I was there in 1993. I got a Compton hat with my buddy Troy when he was in the military down in San Diego. Troy was in the military? Yeah. We got, he got honorably discharged, but I went down, and we went to the Compton swap meet, and he got a Long Beach hat, a Compton hat. We're the two whitest little punks there. I don't know how we made it. But I remember one thing about that trip. When we got in the, in the rental car that he had, uh, there was this little kid, six years old, standing in front of a store. And we were, we were getting in our car. We looked over at him, and he took his fingers like this, and he went – like this, like shooting at his head. I'll never forget it. I don't, I don't know if that meant. Like, is that what we're, we're going to get? So we got out of there. He was like six. <laughs> but I'll never forget it. He just danced around in a circle. That and that was my trip to South Central Los Angeles in 1993. Okay, so we'll just two, about two, two more. more questions yeah, and we here. The and then here. we got some important stuff to cover. Yeah. Um, so I speed day for bench, six sets of six, eight sets of eight, ten sets of ten. And around the same percentage, 40 to 50%. Yeah, 40%, 50% with uh, resistance, uh, t- 25% resistance also. And um, that's what I do. It's, uh, with the 40, I use bands. 45, I use bands. 50, I'll use chains. 55, I'll use chains. And then I wave back. But when I get to the 10 sets of 10, I'm going to be honest with you, it's usually straight weight. And I like to do it with 315 because then it's 31,500 pounds of volume when you're done doing your 10 sets of 10. And if you can do them uh, with, you know, 30 seconds, 40 seconds rest, I mean, I'm not, I'm not in the shape to do that anymore. I did it once. I posted the video, and it was a nightmare. But it's, it's very brutal, and not many people like to do 10-10. There's only one person. His name was Tim Smith when he was here. He was, he was a great training partner. He didn't cry like a little bitch like some people do. He, whatever I threw at him, he didn't say, oh, I don't want to do that. He wanted to do everything I wanted to do, and I wish he could still lift, and I wish he was here. Because those are training partners you want to hold on to. Ones that um, don't cry, don't bitch, don't complain. Always show up on time and don't show up and be like, oh, you know, I'm not feeling it today. You know, you should. The guy would drink. I would go away on vacation in New York to see his family. Send me pictures of uh, what the hell are those drinks of the vodka. Um, vodka and lime juice. What do you call those? Yeah, those and, some, and a chaser and this. And the guy's out getting drunk, not doing any lifting. Flies back. I'm training my ass off. He shows up, hasn't lifted in a week, been drinking his balls off. And then he shows up and, be, and, and does a PR. He did it two times. He came back from a trip like that and, and PR'd. So I'm just like, maybe walking away for a week and getting drunk may be the answer. But I didn't never said that. But it sure seemed like it. Some, some people, some people. still pull it off like crazy. What's your so our last question? What is your best memory with Gene Richlap? Uh, in nineteen, well, uh, what was it? Two thousand seven, Arnold. He was there, 
And uh, now in 2004, Arnold, he was there. And that was the Arnold where everybody, well, one individual made a huge stink about his shirt and was forced him to wear a clothes bat. There was a big shirt controversy that year. It had to be two-ply, and the phenom couldn't be – because Gene Richlack was the man, and somebody didn't like it and created a, caused the owner, to, the uh, promoter to create a rule to make it closed back. I spoke to him briefly there, but after, after the Mark Henry incident at the uh, 2007 – Either that, after or before, I went over and talked to him and shared some words. We took a picture. I'll post it next week. I'll get it somewhere. It's on my Facebook page. But uh, we shared some words, and he was he was short. I mean, um, just not a wild-speaking guy like myself. But I can't remember what we talked about. I think his wife was there, and we said it cracked a few jokes, and, and then that was that. And, you know, now, now he's gone. So... That was my best memory was the, the conversations I had with him there at the Arnold briefly for five minutes. Shook his hand and uh, talk, I think I talked about how he wears his shirt, you know, how he wears it down and what was he going to do next and talk like that, you know, and and uh, and that was that. So, yeah. Nope. And then there were just a couple comments. Yep, heels down hard. hard. So that was commenting on what we were talking about with Mendelssohn. Um, Tessa Trope went all and the Beast were in combo. Oh, 2000s. Yeah, it was still around, I guess. I never got much from the pills, to be honest with you. Um, but the liquid uh, HGF-1 was, was phenomenal. I don't, like I said, I don't know what was in it, but it made me eat food. So, Well, it's that time. Yeah. Uh, mood change here a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, this past week, um, I'm not sure if many of you are aware any man that cruises Facebook and his friends with Tiny Meeker would know what happened Tuesday. Um, I found out when I turned on my phone in the morning that his mother had passed away. And, and he's very close to his mother. He was very close to his mother. We just had much. spent time with Tiny at the Arnold. And we heard a lot about, his, heard mom. A lot about his mother. And then we just had Mother's Day. And when I read that on Tuesday, it just took the wind out of my sails. I remember... I, not, I, I can't even begin to fathom the pain he's going through that day. And my mind was just spinning. I had to mow my lawn that morning. And while mowing my lawn, I was just like, I want to do something. something. I want to do something for him. He's my friend, competitor. He's practically family, you know. Um, and, I, and I just went about my day, and it was 9 o'clock at night that night. And I, I figured he was busy, had a lot on his plate that day. And I looked at Ashley, and I go, should I call him? Because I had his number dialed, and I hung it up, and I went out and got a drink of water. This is 9 o'clock at night. It's 11 o'clock in Houston where he lives. And I'm like, I'm going to call him. And it rang three times, and I got him on the phone, and I, I told him that uh, I was sorry. And, uh, and I was kind of stuttering because I was searching for words. I didn't know, you know, when you, how do you put, you put yourself in that situation? You know, I, I, I offered, you know, was, I was wondering if there was a, a fund set up to we could send some money. And he, he denied that, and um, um, we laughed, we cried. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I said, Tiny, I said on my Bench Monster TV show Thursday night, I like to do a little uh, slideshow for you and, and show appreciation and, and, um, and, and just do something. Would that be all right? And he said, that'd be super cool. So he sent me three pictures, and um, I, uh, I, made, I, spent, I spent better half of yesterday and today putting together in uh, Final Cut Pro and putting um, um, some choir music behind the pictures. Um, and I, I, I read a thousand uh, funeral quotes, inspirational quotes, and I found a poem that when I read it, there was a sentence in there at the end that Tiny had said on the phone that night. And I said, that's the one I'm gonna use. It's only one minute long, but um, it really will tug on your heartstrings. And I just, uh, I just wanted Tiny to know that um, you know, we're here, and uh, yeah, you're not... You. We're so sorry. We know this is such a huge loss. Um, like you said, heaven got one of its angels back. Your mom sounded like a really amazing special lady. Yeah, she was called to heaven, and um, I can't imagine the pain that T Tiny's going through, and I just want to say, you know, it comes from the heart, man. You know, it's uh, uh, thoughts and prayers go out to you, man, and I mean that. We've been thinking about you a lot. Yeah, lately. and... We're um, here if you ever need to talk. I, I really, I really, you know, I'm not... we were closer... I, I want to say I did the best with the, you know, you gave me three pictures and I wanted to do something. And I'm just saying right now, I, I hope you're watching right now because the more than likely the way YouTube works, the choir music that I use behind it, which is so beautiful, 
will probably be copyrighted and take down. So that's why I hope I hope it plays. And I just wanted to end this episode with this um, in remembrance of his mother and a special lady she was and a loving woman. And mm -hmm. it's um, it's just heartbreaking. And uh, yeah, they were very very close. Very you know, close. You took, and you took really good care of your mom. She was very lucky to have have you. Just like you were very lucky to have her. And that's why this evening uh, we're uh, <laughs> we're wearing the uh, Monster Jim shirts. In honor of Tiny, Tiny. and his mom. And um, yeah, so I'm going to um, sign off now, and um, I'm going to play the uh, the um, slideshow. And I thank you for joining us this evening, and uh, we'll be back again next Thursday. Yep. Thank you for joining us. And um, yeah, this is a uh, bench monster uh, signing off. And like I say, you know, God bless.